Good morning and welcome back to Erasmus TV. Our guest of today is the Minister of Education, Ingrid van Engelshoven. Very welcome, it's good to have you here. And Thank on the you. other side of the table, we have Rutger Engels, who I have been accidentally, but frequently, calling Rutger Magnificus, because he's our Rector Magnificus. I'm trying to break the curse here by saying <laughs> it out loud. Very good, yes. successfully. <laughs> We saw um, our Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, yesterday with uh, Corona slash Health Minister Hugo de Jonge. And they announced, well, at least some, some things that can make us happy again. How are you feeling? Happy to go back to the hairdresser? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was not my first priority, to <laughs> no. be honest. But um, I, I think we, it's really good that we make steps. Um, and of course, we uh, we already had discussion with the minister this morning about what it means for the higher education for the universities, and that um, that have those plans have to be developed uh, in the next couple of uh, days and weeks. Um, but I think the actions that are taken are really promising, and uh, give me a lot of confidence that we can can start up campus life again. I mean, limited and in certain conditions, but still. Yeah, because yesterday it was shortly mentioned higher education that we maybe maybe can start in june but isn't it more easy to just tell all universities to keep the doors closed till september no but that's not what we want to do and um, um what i discussed earlier with universities there's a a, a big need to uh, open up uh uh, for uh, exams, uh, for practical educations, for some working uh, uh, groups. Uh, so uh, I'm doing the utmost to uh, make sure that uh, there will be some room for opening uh, in, in, in June. Um, we'll, we're still puzzling on it because, uh, well, it means uh, more people on the street, uh, more uh, students in public transport. So uh, it's quite a puzzle, but uh, we're working hard on it to make something possible uh, in June. Yeah, because how busy are you? Because uh, we had an episode on work pressure a few episodes ago, and it was emphasized how important it is to check in with people. Uh, how are you doing? Is it still manageable? Yes, uh, uh, it is, but it's, uh, well, as for everyone, it are very uh, difficult and complex times. And what we see is, well, we have... Uh, all kinds of questions uh, on, on the table, and every time we have uh, a solution for one of the questions, we have 10 new questions on the table. So uh, it are complex times, and uh, but what I, um, well, I'm very glad to be here because it's so important to stay connected to uh, the academic world, uh, uh, to uh, students, uh, to professors, uh, to teachers, uh, and hear their stories, uh, see what we can do. Um, yes, and it's our, it are very busy times, uh, very complex, but, um, well, yesterday uh, the good news was uh, that um, uh, the spread of the, the, the virus is, uh, is, is going down, uh, there's a little more pressure on uh, um, uh, hospitals, so we can give more room to society, and that was the good news. So. Uh, that gives some hope, and that's, I think, what a lot of people are looking for, some hope, some per perspective on uh, the new normal society. Yeah, and it, but it isn't just nice to check in with uh, everybody how they are doing. It's also relevant, because we see among students, but also among, uh, well, employees of universities, that worries and stress increase. And when you were here two months ago on campus, just shortly, you mentioned your own burnout in your 30s. Does it make you look differently at all those worries? Uh, yes, and uh, well, when I was here before uh, the corona crisis, we already discussed uh, the work pressures uh, among students, um, among uh, staff, and um, well, these are times where uh, everyone is under a lot of uh, pressures, and uh, especially uh, teachers, they had to uh, make online education uh, possible in a week uh, or in two weeks, and, and they did. It is, quite a miracle what happened and what was made possible. So, uh, yes, and I see that they must have done it on a, a lot of work pressure and then doing it uh, on your own um, from your home where maybe you have a couple of children uh, who needed their education or you have a partner who's also working at home and you hear each other's telephone uh, conversations. Uh, that's difficult. So, 
yes, it is important in these days to uh, uh, check in with each other, to uh, see each other's needs mm -hmm. and to work together on uh, perspective. Yeah, but you, of course, know from your own perspective how important it is to keep in touch. Yes. Uh, is it something you comment, well, you talk about with all the other ministers? Yes. And, um, well, we have our... Um, um, well, uh, our, our meetings where we are in touch, but even with my, my own staff, uh, most of them work at home. I, I, I don't see them. Uh, so it's very important to uh, see them on, uh, well, we, on, 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 on video uh, uh, and to check in, uh, how are you doing? How is it at home? And what I see is uh, the relief uh, uh, and the happiness with some of them if they are allowed to, co to come into the office for a couple of hours to uh, see their colleagues again. Uh, and it's so important. It's what we see in this crisis is that how important social contact also with colleagues, with uh, fellow students is uh, for your own welfare. So uh, yes, um, um, uh, we stay at home, but uh, we have to stay in touch. That's very, very important. We gave also students an opportunity to ask you some questions. And in those questions, you see really reflected that they worry that the student loans and their financial burden is getting like a heavy weight around their necks. Um, we have also a student who sent in a video question. This is student Florian. Dear minister, many students worry about their future perspectives. They worry about their financial position, which has worsened significantly during the last couple of years. Furthermore, they worry about their career perspectives due to lack of job opportunities at the labor market and the flexible nature of it. What would you say to these students and can they expect measurements from the government to help them? Um. Yes, I, I understand their, their worries, and as, especially for young people, uh, this is a very difficult time because um, they're the group uh, least affected uh, by the virus. Uh, and what we see in they're the figures, health -wise, yes. uh, uh, they uh, stay uh, healthy, they have uh, uh, a small share in uh, spreading uh, the virus, and still uh, a lot of what's very important for them, uh, job perspective, uh, uh, their study, uh, their, their jobs, uh, um, but also their, their free time, uh, um, uh, seeing each other in the pub, that's all not possible. Uh, there are no festivals uh, uh, this summer. So, so yes, it's a very, very difficult time for young people. And I think it's very important um, that we work on uh, perspective. So uh, as uh, a government, um, I think one of the the b most important things we have to do is uh, make sure that uh, after this crisis uh, our economy um, uh, goes on again and there are job opportunities for uh, uh, young people. And um, these days where I'm especially, uh, especially looking at is uh, those students uh, who um, have a delay in their, in, in, in their studies uh, and who were hoping uh, to finish their studies uh, this summer, uh, but will have to come back uh, uh, next year. And um, what uh, we are looking at, how can we compensate them financially uh, for those extra months uh, uh, they will uh, have, to, have to pay uh, for, for, for their studies. So uh, with my colleagues, I'm uh, working on that plan uh, uh, these days, and I, uh, we ho hope to have found a solution very soon. Yeah, but there are, of course, quite more students. Um, not only do are finishing their studies, you also have, you also already said you don't, well, not going to give a refund in college money. But there are also students who really have a delay. Uh, for example, students who study medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also students, uh, student Tessa emphasized in her mail to us, they are out of work. She says self-employed people uh, get some subsidy from the government. Why isn't there support for us, financially support now, not just a promise that we might have a job in the future? Uh, well, it's uh, it's quite complicated, <laughs> but because uh, uh, what we s see is, well, there is compensation for uh, people who lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, with every group, um, um, we every group where we find a solution for there are new groups uh, who don't fit in the measures we take. Uh, 
uh, and that's, uh, well, we search for it uh, uh, every day, but uh, what we also see is we can't compensate everyone because it's just not doable. Um, uh, a Mr. Minister of Social Affairs, uh, uh, well, he tries uh, to reach all these groups uh, who uh, lose their job and lose incomes, but uh, the amount of people who have to become is so big uh, uh, that uh, it's just not doable to find units so it, that it fits uh, every person. So what, what I'm doing is, uh, well, uh, make sure that those... Uh, uh, those people where the biggest needs are, and we see it for, well, students in the last year uh, who, uh, who have a delay, uh, we will compensate then. Because, well, students in the first, second, or third year, uh, well, there is a chance um, um, you will do it in your normal year. So we, we have to do it step by step. Um, and the problem is huge. And also, the well, uh, the message we have to bring to everyone, we can't compensate everyone for everything uh, because uh, there are losses all over society. Uh, I'm also responsible for the cultural sector. Uh, uh, well, uh, they you also- gave a check for that already, 300 million. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and still uh, everyone says it's not enough and uh, uh, that we'll have to do more. And that's um, uh, small employers, uh, bars, restaurants, well, they have great losses. Uh, well, a lot of companies will go bankrupt. So, yes, uh, the task is huge, but and what we're looking at is where do we find, well, the biggest needs and how do how we make sure that we compensate students who really uh, uh, have a, a, a delay but that can't be compensated in, in time anymore. And I think... Um, uh, one of the most urgent things we have to do is uh, give young people perspective again. So uh, I hope uh, in s opening up society uh, a little bit and uh, making sure uh, economy goes on uh, again and uh, we will work on their future jobs. Yeah, and but students are now also quite worried on the quality of their studies. A student letter uh, writes to us that she's concerned about all the different ways studies are dealing with this crisis. But it's not just studies, of course. Faculties are dealing differently. Universities are even dealing with it differently. Um, to what extent does the ministry well, s support th this, all those different ways of dealing? Well, uh, first and foremost, it's, I think, the task of universities themselves to um, um, continue education uh, mm -hmm. at their best. And I think it's a small miracle what happened in uh, online, online education and uh, continue uh, education as much as possible. And, of course, it's different than it was. And, um, and everyone hopes uh, that we uh, will have kind of... A hybrid form of education uh, as soon as possible again. But I think universities have done a, a, a great uh, a job in uh, switching to an online edu education, and uh, and they're, they're doing their utmost best. And what uh, what I do is stay connected, uh, see what we can uh, uh, do, uh, and um, also in. Um, well, continue uh, financial stability for universities so they can uh, uh, keep up the good work. Yeah. Are you getting enough support, uh, Rutger? Um, from whom? <laughs> do you no, mean? Well, from the ministry. She's of, across of the course. table. We just had a yeah. we had a, a long discussion about it this morning. So what I want to stress is two things. So we actually, it's what you're saying is that the, we made a transition to online learning in three day, in three weeks, what normally takes uh, three years. Uh, and we do that on adrenaline, basically. Uh, but that can't go on. So we just did a survey among students, but also among employees. And what you clearly see is that they experience a lot of work stress, and they already did before. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this actually adds to the pile. And um, we have all kind of support programs for them to how to that they can deal with the stress. Yes, uh, but that doesn't take away the sources of the stress, st stress which is basically too much work. So what I think, so I'm incredibly proud on our lecturers, on our teachers, uh, and our support staff, but I do think that we need to help them uh, more, and that is basically by taking some of away of that burden. And um, we promised students um, two weeks ago that we would guarantee education uh, next year. 
And that's a big promise, uh, and we will do that, but it needs extra efforts and also uh, some extra compensation. Who has to give you that extra compensation? Well, we don't have it, so that's a discussion. <laughs> yeah. That's a discussion we had, and the, I mean, and I think it's important to make that uh, uh, to say that explicitly. But I also want to say that uh, I'm I'm truly proud on what already the university is doing, and also the universities oh, in general, and uh, together with uh, the Ministry of Education. And those worries, of course, not only financially was it's a big thing, but one of the tools universities are increasingly using is um, proctoring exams, so automated home-made exams with digital surveillances. There are a lot of concerns also about that. On, for example, on privacy, um, do you advise universities on that topic? Um, well, it's first. It's universities themselves have to see how do we deal with exams. And what I see is uh, what they do is uh, try uh, um, uh, alternatives, uh, open book uh, exams, assignments. But for s some of the exams, uh, there's no alternative. If you have to uh, organize examination for a couple of hundreds of students, uh, sometimes there is no al alternative. What we say is... Um, if you uh, have online exams at home, it has to be compliant to all our privacy laws. Uh, so no um, unneeded uh, um, data collection. Um, uh, you have to get rid of the data as, as, as soon as possible. Uh, I heard some students say, well, they even sell the data. That can't be, uh, just can't be. And um, we have uh, an authority in the Netherlands on data protection, and they uh, do research on whether or not these forms of examination are compliant to our privacy laws. Yeah, and then, uh, of course, the way... But I see, I, I understand the words of, 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 of all the uh, uh, students. Of course, it's, it's not what you want in an ideal si situation, but it's, well, uh, we aren't in an ideal situation. We have to deal with it. But I do understand their worries, and that's why... We stress, uh, also in my conversations with uh, universities, it has to be compliant to all the privacy laws. Yeah. There are, of course, ways of, well, taking exams, but there are also ways of grading exams. We got a, um, a mail from a student, Nico, and he emphasized to us that there are branches that really tell us, um, that really uh, watch their uh, study average. Or we have a small... Um, a picture of an well, anonymous RSM student who has a complete uh, rant in this here or her rant. Um, he puts the question as this, do you have the balls to change the system to pass or fail? <laughs> Are you gonna change? <laughs> um, well, we have actually, we have discussions about, uh, about this and, um, um, and there are also there are also opposite sides to this. So I mean the problem also with pass and fails, of course, you don't get a you don't get a score. For so for students who actually want to have a higher score, for instance, because they want to have a good score to go to some master, because because that's because it's selective. Um, they are not really like. Um, in favor of this. So I think it's a dilemma. I know that some schools are considerate uh, and we talk about this with the, with the schools and with the exam committees. Mm. It's not an easy one. No, and um, it's not an easy one, And but I think a lot of teachers are getting this question. So would you recommend this, yes or no? Uh, it's, it's not up to me. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, up to the universities, it's up to teachers and it's up to exam committees mm -hmm. uh, to look at it. And I think we have, um, organize it within the, uh, the university community uh, to have a good discussion on uh, what do we do in exams. Uh, we have uh, the exams committee uh, and uh, they have to discuss the issue. It's yeah. not up to me. No. We have another video question actually for an employee this time um, and it's emphasizing that they are quite worried on work pressure and I think this is something that's up to you. In the past six weeks, my team and I, as well as many other faculty and support staff members of this university and throughout the country, have been working for 10 to 14 hours each day from our homes in order to enable the transition for our students to participate in online education. How can you justify that the government announced budget cuts of billions of euro for higher education while at the same time handing out subsidies to companies like KLM? Um, you didn't announce 
these uh, cuts. You g but you came up with a plan that if we would have to make cuts, um, they could possibly go in higher education? No, uh, this is a, a, a big misunderstanding. Uh, what uh, all the departments mm -hmm. have to do uh, uh, every uh, uh, four years and report to the department uh, is uh, make kind of a plan uh, if uh, you get, uh, what will you do with 20% uh, plus in your bud budget and 20 plus minus. It's kind of a theoretical uh, uh, exercise and um, well, the uh, unhappy thing was that we had to publish this uh, with it in the midst of the corona uh, crisis. Uh, it's just what Parliament asked us to do. Uh, there are even, there were plans to have uh, these kind of budget costs in healthcare, uh, which uh, no one can imagine at this moment. So uh, this is uh, really something we are not going to do. And the news is I... Uh, uh, got uh, to have stability in the budget for, uh, uh, also for higher education. Uh, I, get, I just got a compensation of a half a billion in my budget uh, to keep uh, financing uh, the, the financial base of uh, universities stable. So uh, it's the other way uh, uh, around. And uh, don't worry uh, about uh, this 20% uh, 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 minus. Yeah, but I do think that uh, it worries uh, a lot of uh, people who work here. Um, for example, people are doing a PhD and their contracts are, well, ending and they can't do the research they might need to. Um, and I believe you did a suggestion that universities could give them a, a contract. But I also spoke to faculties um, who simply don't have the finance um, for that. Is there something the university or you can do to compensate those people who can't afford it? Yeah. Well, this, this, uh, I, I will have uh, a discussion this afternoon uh, with universities, uh, with our uh, scientific organization to see how we're going to handle this because we see a lot of uh, delays in research. So, uh, yes, we have to do something about uh, the contracts and it's well something uh, we will have to find a solution for together. And... Um, uh, and the difficult thing in these times, it's, it's, uh, you can't uh, um, uh, find a solution for everything in saying, well, uh, 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 extra money for this, extra money for that. Yes, we need uh, uh, extra money for compensation somewhere, but um, the problems are so big, uh, we have to be creative together. But this is exactly what we are going to talk about this afternoon. How do we make sure that there is a continuation of uh, uh, research and a continuation of uh, uh, co contracts. Mm -hmm. And we all have, will have to do uh, uh, something uh, together there to make it possible. Yeah. A few of your colleague uh, rectors, for example, the one in Maastricht, said they are quite worried, but also in Leiden. Um, they um, weren't pleased, as I could put it like that. How do you feel about all, all this financial insecurity for the future, perhaps? Yeah, it's clear, it's clear that we have them, and um, uh, we also discussed it with the minister, of course. And I think there are two, uh, different ways to look at this. First of all, uh, we have more expenses right now because of the corona crisis and, the and also in research, because basically all the research now, um, experiments, lab experiments, all kind of research um, in all domains is um, basically determined, has stopped, so that it has tremendous costs. Uh, and also uh, the consequences for PhD students who are a vulnerable group of student, of people because they have temporary contracts. So um, I really worry about that. I also worry about the influx of new students. So it is quite unpredictable how many students we will have here uh, next academic year. And um, if there's a serious drop in students, we uh, will encounter uh, severe uh, consequences from that. Um, it's really hard to predict right now, um, because it's uh, because the um, yeah because we simply don't know. We don't know mm -hmm. how many students will actually at some point in August sign up and show up. So um, so it's quite unpredictable. But I definitely worry about that. Yeah, but and if we can wrap it up, so financially, universities are going to have a hard time. There will probably be fewer international students, and those are more lucrative than Dutch students because they pull the f pay the full amount. And um, but there might even be less students at all. Um, so 
and of course, let's not forget all the extra money universities, I know the Erasmus did, f to put in um, online education and to make that transfer possible. But, so, but also, as you say, funding for science is under pressure. And you're not only the Minister for Higher Education, but also for sciences. Yes. Is this something you have to fight for back in The Hague? Uh, well, uh, yes, yes of, uh, of, of course. And uh, well, there are um, uh, worries about budgets uh, uh, in every uh, ministry because, uh, well, look at the Ministry of uh, 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 Healthcare, uh, public transport uh, needs extra funding, uh, municipalities need extra funding, uh, police needs extra funding. Uh, so. It's huge, uh, the, the problems we have, but I think my job is uh, to make sure that, uh, because for our own future, um, education is of the utmost important. Scientific research, we see these days, uh, what more proof do we need that uh, science uh, is, uh, well, one of, um, our biggest assets uh, uh, we have. And for example, uh, what uh, Erasmus University is doing with uh, the Erasmus Medical Center and uh, Delft University in, in working together, that's exactly um, what we need in these days. So um, what I try to do is convince everyone in The Hague that uh, for our own future and to survive this, uh, not only the corona crisis, but also uh, the economic crisis that will follow from this, uh, we need investments in higher education and in research. Uh, that's really key, uh, not only in the Netherlands, but also uh, in, in Europe. So I will also do it in, 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 in Europe, but because uh, these are key investments uh, for our own future. Yeah. It's not just spending, it's investing. No, and just before we went into this recording, I saw an article that uh, KLM is getting uh, had their financial help without too many, well, rules or questions with it, because it has priority. But we also want, of course, that the students here can someday work um, at big companies, but also they have to get good studies. How is it, um, can, you, you say we can't do it all, um, but in how, well, is, is a university a priority in this? Uh, yes, it's a, a big uh, priority, and uh, yes, uh, we uh, we have to look at all the elements uh, because uh, uh, well, uh, uh, KLM is important in uh, for the Dutch e economy and to keep the economy going. That's also an importance of uh, these students, uh, uh, and for KLM, it's a loan. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not money they're getting. It's a loan, and these are guarantees. That's quite different than what we do. Uh, uh, for uh, university, because that's uh, real spending uh, of money. But uh, uh, yes, uh, we have to do both. We have to see uh, how do we keep our economy strong and, uh, and, and growing again, and we have to invest in uh, education, uh, from primary education to higher education. We need uh, a well-educated population for the future, uh, and we need scientific uh, uh, research. Uh, so and you uh, will fight for for this in the in the Hague. Yes, and I think um, uh, well before Corona uh, a crisis broke out, we had uh, a, a letter of the Ministry of Finance and uh, Economy who say well that said well for um, for the growth of our economy we need uh, uh, it's education first, it's uh, uh, it's science, uh, it's research. And I think that's still what we believe in. Yeah, and all the universities, including Erasmus, are getting a lot of international students. Um, but um, And I got this question from Academic Affairs. Is this coronavirus a reason for you to look differently at internationalization of, well, universities? Well, uh, internationalization still is very important for our higher education and for our economy. Uh, uh, we need... Um, we, we need the internationals uh, uh, here, so, and it's very un un unpredictable what will happen. Uh, and I, I think we can't predict what, what will happen uh, in August and in September. Uh, are they going to enroll? Uh, are they even able to, to come here? Uh, will they uh, start uh, o online? Um, but I hope uh, um, that uh, 
uh, we will keep international students uh, uh, here because it's it's so important for uh, the quality of our education, the quality of our uh, uh, research, and for the future, the quality of our economy. Are we are an international country. And there are also students who are, well, marked as seen sometimes as international students, but actually are quite Dutch. For example, the students in the Caribbean islands overseas. And they can't get here, and they can't in, enroll in another university because there simply isn't one. But they are, well, our future, our students. Um, and there is a crisis going on at the islands. They have it hard financially. Um, how are you helping those students? Uh, uh, well, we have, as a government, uh, uh, special programs to help the islands in the Caribbean uh, to, to survive corona uh, crisis. And uh, I'll be in touch with uh, the ministries of education there to see how we can help uh, students there who uh, were planning to enroll uh, in uh, education, uh, for example, in, in, in Rotterdam, can't come here. And how can we help them to, to start, to make a start, uh, uh, for example, in online uh, mm -hmm. uh, education. Uh, and um, hopefully uh, they will be able to get here soon. Yeah, there are some worries still of, uh, well, we hear students saying this, that their online education isn't as much worth as the physical education. Uh, but there are, as you say, a lot of students who might start with online education. What would you say to them? Uh, well, I say uh, grasp every opportunity you have to start your education. Of course, it's, it, it, it's different, and I'm very happy that a lot of universities said, well, we, uh, going, uh, we hope we can start uh, in, a, in a hybrid way uh, uh, in, in September. Uh, I hope we'll, we'll be able to give some opening to universities already in, 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 in June. Uh, but please uh, grasp every opportunity you have to start your studies because uh, that's, it's still the best investment you ever can do in your own future. Yes, online, hybrid, physical, it's still the best investment you can make. Rutger, last question to you. Uh, what would you say to students who might want to enroll here? Oh, that the they should come to us. So <laughs> That's not a surprise, yes. They, they should come to the, uh, when it's possible, we invite them here on campuses in Rotterdam and they will have a wonderful time and have really good studies. This is one of the top universities in the world uh, with extremely good programs. And um, so the, I'm, I'm welcoming all the students that want to come here. And I want to say one thing about uh, the really good point the minister is making. The solution to this crisis, both health-wise as economically as society, lies in science and lies in the education of our bright students. And I think that's the a message I want to give. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you all for watching. This was the episode of today, a bit longer than you were used to, but, well, we took the, the time and the opportunity we got. We're back on Monday, and then we will have uh, another, another guest. He is an RSM alumnus, and he's part of the outbreak management team. So he's advising the ministry. Yes. But he's here on Monday. Thank you for watching. See you then.